Hello, welcome to Columbus, Ohio. I'm Rachel Miller and this is Color Splash. So I am continuing my experiment on this beautiful October afternoon. I am using a pearl base, which means I have some satin enamel mixed in with my acrylic paint. However, I have dramatically lessened the amount of satin enamel I have in my paint because I'm painting on traditional canvas and not a tile. The difference when you paint on an unglazed tile is that the because it's so porous, it kind of locks your painting down exactly as you do it. So what you see is what you get when you're done with the painting. Um, Bromix is a chemical reaction that occurs between the satin enamel and the acrylic paint because one is oil-based and one is water-based. And so that reaction can continue to occur even once you're done painting and the piece is sitting drying. And I found that that reaction will occur for a longer, the longest period of time when you paint on a traditional canvas. So what I'm trying to do is kind of counter the effects of that reaction by backing off of the satin enamel some and seeing if we can get it so that what you see at the end is pretty much what you're gonna end up with dry. So I am going to start off, I'm gonna use a little different color palette today, but I'm still gonna start with my um, Payne's Gray by Arteza. And I think I'm gonna do more of a traditional flower, although this paint is not coming off the stick the way I hoped it would today. Oh, it's doing really well actually right now. I maybe spoke too soon. Whoops. Okay, of course I just did that. The other thing I'm doing to kind of counter the pearl reaction is I'm laying down more of the acrylic paint for it to eat at because the acrylic paint is almost food for the pearl paint, okay? So the more of it I have down, the more of it I'm going to be left at left with at the end because there's more for it to eat and so there'll be a little bit more leftovers basically. Okay, my flower is already sort of lopsided on this canvas, which I have pretty level. So, okay, oh well, we're gonna roll with it anyway. Next, I'm gonna come in with a little bit, no, I'm not. I'm gonna come in with my Titanium Buff by Amsterdam. And I'm going to be very generous with the Titanium Buff. The Titanium Buff is a color that's really important to me when doing these pearl paintings. Um, it creates all of those, the dimension. I get a lot of comments that my, oops, my pearls look very 3D and how is that the case? Well, part of the answer, not the whole answer, but part of the answer is that I'm using this Titanium Buff color which kind of acts as a highlighter for the pearls. So I go very heavy on this titanium buff color. It is definitely critical to getting really pretty pearls in my opinion. So now I'm gonna come in with a little bit of Primary Magenta by Amsterdam. And I'm putting these colors down next to each other, not 100% on top of each other. Some I will layer on top of each other, some not so much. Okay. Then I'm going to come in with some permanent red violet. Some of these paints are heavier than others, unfortunately. I mix these kind of by eye and feel. I don't do an exact measuring. They're approximately one to three, one to four with Floetrol. But I 
just kind of eyeball it and go by consistency. Oh shoot, I'm missing one of my colors. Hang on. Where is it? Okay, guys, I'm missing one of my key colors here. Sorry for the noise. Oh, my aluminum foil. Okay, this is Persian Rose by Amsterdam, and this, if I had had it out, would have been watered down slightly. Now, also something to note is I tend to paint on a much thicker base than what you typically find in pearl paintings. A lot of people do that method where you kind of pour and tilt, pour and tilt. You put the um, pearl paint down, then you lay down your acrylic and then you tilt really fast and kind of thin and spread that paint out. That is clearly not the method that I am utilizing. Um, I'm coming in with a little bit, oh, actually, Pardon my reach. I'm going to put in a little bit of Pebio iridescent bronze, which looks spectacular. Or I, not bronze, copper. Sorry. Here, my brain. Sometimes I wonder if it's always turned on. This iridescent copper color is so gorgeous. Okay, almost out of that color. Then I'm going to come in with just a little bit of this color, also by Amsterdam, called Transparent Red. And it is just that. It is a very light red color. It, it, gosh, I need to slow down. It is um, not very opaque, so often it can go missing in paintings, depending on where you put it. Let's see, I think I'm gonna come back in with a little bit more of the Payne's Gray. And just kind of do a double loop. Oopsies. Okay. And then I'm going to come in with just a little bit of this turquoise green color, which I think looks really cool with these shades of pink. And I'm going to do a little bit of a shade called Brilliant Blue. And I wish I had my gold good to go, but I do not. So I'm going to have to skip that. I think I'll come in with just a tiny bit more of the permanent red violet. And then I think I'm going to last come in with a custom color that I made. Um, using neutral gray and artist loft white. It's just a very soft gray color. Ooh, that paint kind of 
this smells funny. And maybe a tiny little bit of silver. And this is an Arteza silver. Okay, I think that should do it. So I'm going to grab my cell activator and I'm going to try to float it here over the center. And this is simply Amsterdam, Amsterdam Lamp Black mixed with Australian Floetrol. And I need a pretty good center of this because it's got to blow out across the entire painting. And what I'll be left with at the very end is just a little bit of negative black space in the center of the piece, which is why I've kind of nicknamed this technique my black hole series, or my black hole technique. I'm just going to try it. I got a little bit of silver in here. I don't want that there. Okay. Well, that is certainly plenty of cell activator. So now I'm going to grab my blow dryer and on the low cool setting, I'm going to slowly blow this guy out. I can already see this is going to be gorgeous. Wow. This is a gorgeous piece. Holy moly. These colors are crazy cool together. There's a little bit of bare white corner, and I don't mind that one bit. I kind of like the way that bare white corner looks. I'll show you guys what I mean in a minute, in case you can't see it from your perspective. But oh my goodness, is this a gorgeous piece. I am so excited about this. The pearl cells are just popping up all over the place, which is interesting because this is a lesser mix, but it certainly isn't slowing it down very much. So what I'm going to do, and you probably already know what I'm going to say, in order to kind of close up some of this black hole, I am going to grab a clean skewer and a clean paper towel, and I am simply going to dip my skewer into the cell activator and gently kind of slightly scratch at the bottom of the canvas. And all I'm doing is creating a pathway for the paint that's hiding underneath that black cell activator to rise. I'm not using any silicone. There's no silicone in this anywhere. I am just simply creating an open pathway for the pearls to pop through the cell activator. And oh my goodness, you can see them coming up. Where I touch, you'll see a little white spot, and that little white spot will turn into a cell. Sometimes it takes a little bit, but they do pop up, and oh my gosh, these pearls are spectacular. And quite frankly, if I left this alone, the pearls that you're seeing already would start closing their way in towards the center and fill in much of this black space on their own. I am just sort of helping the process along and sort of determining where a lot of these cells end up.
Now, sometimes they don't want to pop up. So what I will do is use the back side of the stick, which has a larger surface area and will kind of remove some of that cell activator and suck the paint underneath right up with it. And you can see it just happened there. The only problem is it is big and it will shift the pearls around it. So you have to be very careful when you use this method. You don't want to disturb the pearl cells that are already there. Oh yeah. Oh wow, I'm getting a bright blue cell there. Very cool. Very, very cool. And as you can see, my black area is slowly closing. And I'm getting more and more pearl cells filling in. And oh my gosh, you're going to love this when you see it close up. It is just gorgeous. Now, the reason I'm using a lesser mix, if I didn't say already at the beginning, it's because I'm hoping that this pearl reaction will slow down as it's sitting and drying. On a tile, it slows almost instantly, but on a canvas, it will continue to grow and change the longer it's sitting there drying. And so what you see at the very beginning is not what you end up with. And I like to be able to really predict what I'm gonna end up with in the end. So that's why I'm mix messing with these um, ratios on my pearl mix to see if I can come up with a mix that is a little less reactive so that when I paint on a traditional canvas, I can predict what I'm going to end up with. And holy moly, you guys are going to die when you see this. Here, let me bring you in for a closer look. Oh my word, is this not gorgeous? Look at these spectacular cells. These colors are just gorgeous together. There's that copper color. Oh my goodness. Oh, and that blue looks outrageous. I just love the, the sunset colors blending with the sky colors. So beautiful. And I'm really hoping that this is going to keep its initial look once it's dry. I mean, look at that that is so gorgeous. It is hard. I mean, it's even prettier in person. I wish you guys could all be here in my kitchen to see what I'm seeing. I'm so taken with this. I mean, these colors just look like they're glowing. Looks like there's a light behind them sort of lighting them up and those dark cells are really cool. Oh, and look at the gentle pink halo in these. Where is my, the gentle pink halo in here. Oh my word. So beautiful. I am really excited about this piece. So because I'm not good at editing yet, I'm probably going to have to do a dry results video once this and the one I did a few minutes ago are dry. And hopefully they're going to look a whole lot like they look right now because they are gorgeous right now. Well, thank you so, so much for joining me. I have had a wonderful, wonderful time painting today. Really great time. I'm going to have to start cleaning up soon, which stinks. I could sit and paint all day long. Never get tired of the surprise in this art form.
Anyway, thank you so much. If you had fun with me, please remember to click like and subscribe. And as always, happy painting, y'all. See you next time.